Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, January 29th, 2019. Please keep in mind that energies are fluid. So just because this is what's coming through and is labeled for Tuesday, January 29th, it doesn't mean it has to be something that you're going through on this day. It could be something that, you know, happens for you a few days down the road. It could be something you've already dealt with. Or because this is a general reading, it may not be anything that has happened to you at all or anything that you've gone through or are going to go through. But if you'd like to hang out and just chat with us, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you haven't already, if I've done so already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. You can also follow me on Facebook at divine conversations 2711. Um, 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 yeah, I am still doing a little bit of a sale on Instagram for my followers. Uh, all Instagram followers get 20% off a general freestyle reading, but that only lasts until midnight, uh, January 31st. So act fast. Cause you only have like about two more days <laughs> for that. Um, also keep in mind that Betsy and I of Betsy of fearless intuition, we are going to be going live tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for a Twin Flame Conversations, a conversation, yeah, um, tonight, January 29th, around 6 p.m. So if you'd like to get in on it, that's not necessarily going to be a reading. Um, I doubt we're going to be, be pulling any cards. We're just having a conversation about it because... There's always things to talk about in the Twin Flame Collective, so check that out, okay? Be aware that is going down tonight, okay? So, let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so this is a general reading. It is not sign-specific. It's not love-specific. Nothing, yeah? This is just what Spirit wants to discuss with us today. So let's see what we've got. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Tuesday, January 29th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So... I saw some light blue. It's almost a grayish color. But I also did see green for the heart chakra. It is my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, dad. Um, <laughs> I doubt you're going to see that. But <laughs> anyway, um, I was just thinking about because I was seeing green. Ow. Something's hurting me, guys. I don't like it. It's not nice. Um, sorry. <laughs> I was seeing green and I was thinking of the heart space. And that's when I, rem when I remembered, you know, it's my dad's birthday. I don't know. Just the heart space. Oh, Spirit just said, call attention to the heart space. All right. Some, of, some people, somebody out there, some of us, well, many of us are very much centered in our heart spaces right now. That's totally true some of us need to call attention to the heart space and some of us need to bring attention to the heart space and actually now spirit is showing me this like grayish light blue color and again it's almost as if it's like a pale color it's like a, it's like almost lifeless some of you might feel kind of lifeless just kind of blech apathetic almost ready to give up in some way And in order to, to pull yourself out of that, you're needing to illuminate your heart space. But I can already tell how difficult that could be, especially if you're, in a, if you're in a state of apathy. It's like you don't really care to do anything. I get that. I've been there many, many a time. But see, for me now, and I hope this isn't discouraging, but... But for me now, I'm like, my heart space is, I can't not illuminate it. 
so I guess it's almost like a polar opposite like like sometimes I wish I didn't care as much because that would just make things so much easier maybe that's what some people are feeling out there but then at the same time I look at myself and say no actually I would rather care than not hey at least it keeps life interesting right <laughs> Oh boy. All right, let's get one more shuffle here. And then we'll see what we've got. Oh, oh God. Scared the crap out of me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, that's it. Here we go, guys. Let's see what we've got for today. The Eight of Wands. All right, movement. The Three of Cups. January 29th, Tuesday, Tuesday, January 29th. Woo! Ah! But you see, you can't be apathetic anymore, can you? Because you do have the Ace of Swords here. Aha! Underneath the deck is the Ace of Pentacles. Brand new. And please, please, please excuse the manicure. I have to redo it. I might redo it while we have this conversation tonight. I was thinking about that earlier. I was, I was thinking, would, be, would Betsy be mad if I was like doing my, na my nails while we're having this conversation? I don't think so. Spirit just said, yeah, she wouldn't. <laughs> would you guys be mad? I hope not. Because that'd be the, the ultimate multitask right there. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So we have the Ace of Pentacles underneath the deck. We have the Ace of Swords. New beginnings is what Spirit is saying. Um, and there are new ideas. But what I'm getting with this, and actually this is actually kind of falling right in line with what I was talking about on during the Twin Flame reading this weekend. Um, in the form of moving in a new creative direction, okay? It's funny because a lot of us have started over in a sense, we've, we've, we've moved into a new paradigm. We've moved into a new sense of reality. And so the newness of it is still in creation. If that even, if that's even like good grammar, I don't know. I probably could say that better, but like there are still more, even though you've moved into this new energetic space, there's still more that is being created. And with the Ace of Swords here, this is like cutting down to the quick, getting to the bottom of things, planning, maybe planning something out. It could be, but it could be logically looking at something, working and seeing it as seeing through all the illusion, all the bullshit, like working out. Okay. Okay. You have the eight of wands, you have the shadow work and you have the three of cups. Then we have the four of cups, the three of pentacles, the six of cups, the 10 of wands and the high priestess beneath all of that. So that was an interesting spread today. I like the little, I like this little design here. This little design we've got going here, guys. It's cute. It's totally cute. Totes cute. Totes cute. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So what does all of this mean? What does all of this mean? Excuse me. Well, Well, there's definitely some shadow work that's happening. And this shadow work is has everything to do with seeing things clearly with the Ace of Swords. For many of you, you're doing a lot of shadow work to cut away all of the shit that would keep you moving forward in your new manifestation. So some of you are creating a new business for sure with the Ace of Pentacles. You have an idea that you're moving towards, but you're still needing to do some of the shadow work to get the ball rolling, to get it off the ground, to flesh it out even with the Eight of Wands shadow work. And with the Three of Cups, this is to me coming together creatively, mind, body, and spirit, to use all of your faculties to do this, okay? Especially with the Ten of Wands here. With all of this shadow work that's doing, that, that someone is doing or that you are doing, I mean, 
especially if you're creating something new, yeah, you are pretty burdened. You could be feeling pretty burdened with all of the responsibilities of what you need to do to get it off the ground. Excuse me, but, but, it's being done. Now, for others of you, I mean, we're still carrying on with this reconciliation energy for some, but shadow work is being done. And when shadow work is involved, reconciliation within is happening, communication within, okay? Now, what is shadow work? Some of you may say shadow work is working with your darkness, um, doing some healing that is like deep in your subconscious. Um, facing your demons, facing your fears. Definitely an energy of facing your fears with the Ace of Swords. I mean, straight up. Now, moving forward, you have the Four of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Six of Cups, and this Ten of Wands here. Huh. <laughs> And it's funny because what I'm getting with this is that some of you are really doubling down on your self-mastery in spite of some sort of missed opportunity with the Four of Cups. But the Four of Cups in this deck is much more serene. It talks more about emotional stability. In my opinion, that's what this feels like because this woman is very peaceful. She's meditative. She's not, or she's in a meditative state. She's not focused on any one cup, okay? She, she has them neatly spaced, you know, around her. Fours are a number of balance and stability and grounding. So to me, this is grounding the emotions, stabilizing the, the emotions. It, this gives a very similar energy to the Four of Swords, which is taking a mental rest, taking a respite, taking a time out, meditation, seeing something from a different perspective, working on seeing something from a new perspective. Here, we're talking about emotional grounding, emotional stability. Okay, so in the face of this new venture that you may be trying to undertake, you're really working hard to stay emotionally grounded. And again, this falls in line with what I was talking about for the, um, in the Twin Flame reading. It was mainly in the, it was messages coming through in the Divine Feminine Spot section of the reading, but don't burn yourself out. If you have a new idea, follow through with it. But cut to the quick here, cut to the chase with the Ace of Swords. And, and realize with this Ace of Pentacles underneath the deck that this is going to take time. For some of you, this has absolutely everything to do with something that's pretty nostalgic for you, something that you've always wanted to do, something that you've always been passionate about or really had fun with, but never really felt like you could do anything about it in your life. And now with this Ace of Swords here, it's like, whoa, wait a second, I could actually make this into something. Because we're all moving into a new paradigm of what would be considered unconventionalism in many different ways. So a lot of us really don't even want to be working in the 3D anymore. So we're looking for ways to not do that. We're, we're, we're getting our creative juices flowing, you know, and trying to see how we can be of service to humanity, but be greater versions of ourselves, more authentic to who we truly are changing up the matrix because we are the matrix, right? We're, the matrix is not something that's separate to us. We are the matrix. And so we're changing that up. Now, the, the, with the 10 of wands here, yes. Yes, this absolutely could be burdensome right now. And actually you might be dealing with some burdens in your mind. So you've got the ace of swords there belief systems, thought patterns, 
doubts, fears. But see those for what they truly are and do your shadow work there. That's where the shadow work lies. And honestly, the more you shadow work you do, the faster you'll move with this eight of wands here. At the very bottom of the reading, you have the high priestess. And I feel like this high priestess at the bottom of everything is the universe just kind of watching you, seeing how you handle this. And it feels a little ominous, sure. It does kind of feel like um, a teacher or like a, a teacher-student situation where the student is now like taking some sort of quiz or exam or something and the teacher's just sitting there watching them expressionless, straight up poker faced, just waiting for the results just to see how you perform. So you could be, <laughs> that does feel a little nerve wracking. And it's, it's a very emotionless thing. It's like, I'm not, the universe is saying, we're not trying to like instill fear in you or anything. We're just trying to see how much you have learned so far. What are you going to do with this? Okay, so the secretive aspect of the high priestess is coming through with that. But they don't want to give away any answers. They're not trying to, they're trying to see how you perform. And through that, it's like an assessment test. And then through that, you know where, what to improve, where you need to improve, what needs to be worked on, what needs to be fixed, blah, blah, blah. It's not a pass or fail thing. It's not a situation where you do poorly or you can fail and now you're like demoted or something. It's not even like that. It really is not even like that. They're saying, no, trust us. It's really not even like that. Okay. The biggest thing I want to say in this situation is keep your wits about you. Work towards seeing everything for, as it truly is. So as things pop up, see it for what it truly is. And if, especially if it's like, it feels good for you, that's great. It feels great. That's awesome. Still see it for what it truly is. Don't let your emotions blind you. Okay. You have a lot of energy of self-mastery and balance between the three of cups, the three of pentacles and the four of cups here. And I know the four of cups doesn't often mean this balance or whatnot but in this deck it absolutely says that to me four of cups emotional balance you might be really excited you might really want to move quickly especially because the eight of wands is here but you just got to balance and work out the kinks with the ten of wands this is a good energy but there's definitely shadow work involved all right we're going to get started on the clarification here. I definitely want to start with shadow work. Okay, here we go. Clarification time. Shadow work, eight of wands, three of cups. Please clarify, spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, well, would you look at that? Underneath the deck is the two of pentacles. Some of you are still juggling. Some of you are still like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. I mean, I really want to, but look at that. There's the four of cups again. You have the eight of cups. No, I'm sorry, not the eight of cups, the eight of swords and the king of cups. So your shadow work in this situation has to do with evolving emotionally. Now in this deck, the Four of Cups is much more of a what? It's much more of a sad card. This does speak about rejection missed opportunity and you would be missing your opportunity 
if you don't move, remove yourself from this Eight of Swords energy, which is that feeling of you can't, you can't do it. You can't work outside of the Matrix or the 3D world. You have to be a part of that. Why? King of Cups. You don't have to be a part of that. This King of Cups has been coming up a lot lately. And it's all, it has everything to do with emotional maturity. You can do anything that you put your mind to. And it's so funny that it's coming out this way because the Eight of Swords is saying, your mind is already set that you can't do it. So couldn't that be proof right there that if you change your mindset, you could do it? Huh. And now, look at it this way. You have, you're going from the ace underneath the deck to the two underneath the deck of pentacles or discs. So you're progressing. You're in the infant stages, infantile stages of it. But your shadow work is to be emotionally honest with yourself, like step up for yourself. And don't miss out on, on an opportunity, okay? King of Cups, also. All right, so now we're going into a little bit of a soulmate situation here. Because now I'm seeing someone that is stepping up emotionally. But could be facing missing an opportunity. But that's what the shadow that's the shadow work they're doing. I see someone growing out of this four of cups and eight of swords energy into this king of cups who could potentially come forward and say something with the eight of wands that these are clarifying. Okay. Okay, so now let's go down to the Four of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Six of Cups, and Ten of Wands here. My ear is ringing. So, my ear is ringing on the right side. That's your masculine side. So, okay, that's definitely some masculine energy. Obviously, it's the King of Cups, but that's resonating with the masculine. So, you could be dealing with this, yeah, absolutely, your inner masculine energy. Okay. Growing up and showing up, y'all. I know that's right. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's get to this next section here. Four of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Six of Cups, Ten of Wands. Please, Spirit. Mmm. So you have the fool here underneath the deck. You have the hermit. Wow, with justice. You have the lovers. But then you have the five of swords and the three of swords. The five of swords fell sideways. Hmm. I just, I'm seeing two sides of an equation here. I'm seeing one side has the high, the, 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 the hermit, excuse me, justice and the lovers. While the other side is still stuck in this five of swords, three of cup, uh, I'm sorry, three of swords energy. Okay, if we're talking soulmates here, I'm seeing two different people. I'm seeing one person that has come into some greater balance and has really worked on the self-mastery because this is clarifying the Three of Pentacles with the Four of Cups. Okay, and yes, so you can say the Four of Cups can talk about a missed opportunity here. And actually what I'm seeing, if we're talking soulmates, what I'm seeing here is this person over here with this Five of Swords and Three of Swords is resonating more with this Four of Cups, Eight of Swords, 
King of Cups energy, which would potentially be the masculine here. Whereas the feminine has gone in, done the soul searching. I mean, I'm literally, the reason why I'm having so much trouble getting this out right now is because I'm literally repeating myself. From days past. I mean, it's, it's literally the same old story, which is somewhat frustrating. Okay. But someone has come into a greater balance. Someone has done the, the, the soul searching and now justice is being served here. It's slow going with the Ace of Pentacles, but justice is being served and there's a brand new start happening. Okay, you're really embarking on a brand new journey with the Fool. And also you could be dealing now, if, conversely, you could be dealing with opposition in the form of the Five of Swords and the Three of Swords. Someone is heartbroken, and thus they don't want to just let you go that easy, easily, potentially. You could be doing this. You could be. But I'm seeing that someone is moving forward in the face of this, with this Five of Swords, Three of Swords energy that's falling on the Six of Cups and the Ten of Wands. Some of you are still dealing with situations that are combative and are heartbreaking. And you're needing to cut away, cut through it. Just cut through it. Release yourself. You are the only one that can do it, too. You're the only one that can release yourself from this. All right? Okay. Oracle. What do we want for the Oracle today? The unicorns. Today just seems like a weird day, a weird message. I don't know why, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got for you today, January. 29th, best message, please, spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Underneath the deck, you have partnership. Teamwork will give you a better result. Find trustworthy people to partner with. Build up a talented support team. Excellent. Excellent. And then you have three cards here. You have strength. This challenge will make you stronger. You will get through to the other side. Look for the gifts in this situation. Miracles. Have faith that your miracle is on its way. Your prayers have been answered. Surrender the how. And magic. Make a wish. Believe in miracles. Magic surrounds you. So some of you are really just needing to believe in the magic of the universe, the magic of yourself. We're going to close with the Crystal Mandala deck today and believe in miracles. So if you have something that you, a long-standing situation that you've been trying to get out of, you can manifest a way out of it. You can believe in miracles to get yourself out of that. If you have a new project or a new venture that you're working on right now, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, be clear and know that anything is possible. But you have to release the expectation. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Ha, ha, ha. You have to release the expectation. You have to release control. And just follow through. Allow the universe the space to work on your behalf. Okay. All right. Closing message from the Crystal Mandala deck. go. There it is. Unconditional trust. Ah, underneath the deck, you have rare success. I mean, <laughs> I 
need I say more? Let's go with this one here. Card number 31, Ascended Master, Mother Mary, and Celestite, Unconditional Trust. Um, I, I really feel like Mother Mary's energy is coming through a lot, especially with this divine, the, the rise of the divine feminine, sure. But also, um, in order to nurture us and care for us, because we all, many, many of us are embarking on brand new journeys here. Okay. So you have unconditional trust. We bring you the blessing of unconditional trust. There are times when trust comes easy, easily. Perhaps life is proceeding according to some sort of plan, or you have enough money to feel safe, sufficient prospects on the horizon to feel excited, and enough love in your relationships to feel wanted and valued. Then there are times when it is harder to trust. Perhaps none of the above applies to you. You are lost, feel alone, confused, and without a clear plan or sign of hope ahead. You might be frightened and just want something to lift you out of the darkness and into the light. Your mind, and perhaps your family and friends, might tell you that this is a time that is crazy to trust. They may tell you that you should try to fix yourself, get real, give up, and get on with life. Do not listen to doubts or negativity in others or yourself. It is safe to trust. The Divine Mother is watching over you and will guide you safely into the new life awaiting you. And I mean, that falls perfectly in line with this Ace of Swords that's here. Okay. The Oracle of Unconditional Trust says to you that this is the time when you need to trust the most. This is the time when you need to trust unconditionally. You may feel comfortable doing this, or you may feel deeply challenged by this idea. You may feel there is no particular evidence that you should trust, and yet you'll happily do it anyway. Or maybe you feel that trusting without a sign that things are going to improve is beyond you. Either way, this oracle brings you a message. The divine is looking out for you. I think I want to read more. For the weary and anxious mind, unconditional trust can bring such relief. The idea that you don't have to keep working and that everything, I'm sorry, that you don't have to keep worrying and that everything is going to work out according to a higher plan and divine grace can soothe away mental anguish and emotional suffering. If it is difficult for the mind to let go, it might prefer to keep worrying and trying to work things out. This could be especially so if you have relied upon people before and then been let down or don't feel absolutely certain the universe loves you and has your best interest at heart to always act for your highest good. If the mind is in fear response like this, it needs to be reassured. It needs to understand why you are in a situation where unconditional trust is being asked of you in the first place. There may be many reasons, some of which you come to understand in hindsight. There is one reason that is always true, however, and it may help your mind to relax a little and allow your heart to take over. This reason is that the divine wants to be more involved in your life. It wants to help you avoid unnecessary pitfalls, pain and obstacles, and only go through the suffering absolutely essential for your growth. That is so much less than what we fear or expect it to be. It wants you to be filled with divine love and to live a life that is increasingly free, graceful, and blessed so you inspire others to trust unconditionally too. How can this happen? Only when you allow the divine unrestricted access to your life. The only way you can do that is by trusting unconditionally. And I really feel like that's been a big lesson that we've all been going through. I want to say since De December, November, many, many of us, because many of us made a big shift over this last three to four months. And we're still kind of in the baby stages of it, but not really. You've come really far so far. And I know personally, I just in the month of December, I did a lot of work towards really learning how to unconditionally trust the universe and myself. So that's put me personally in a state to really 
double down and immerse myself in this and really start thinking clearly with the Ace of Swords, what is it I want to be doing? I mean, I have this inspiration. I was definitely resonating with the Divine Feminine messages, message in the Twin Flame reading this weekend. I want to move in a new creative direction. What is that? And what do I need to be cutting away in order to do that? Because yes, there absolutely are some things from my past that are falling away, that no longer serve me in the manner that I had been pursuing them. So they may not be completely falling away, but they're changing, they're shifting for sure. Ace of Swords with that Ace of Pentacles. How do we create this Ace of Pentacles here? How do we get this off the ground? How do we get the ball rolling? That's where, that's the energy that we're in right now. All right, guys. I love you all. I hope you have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you tonight with Betsy for our little conver, our car, our conver, our convo, our chitsky chatsky, our chits with the chats, and the, the chats with the chits, and the chitskies and the chatskies. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a great day. Mwah. Bye.